Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie Yates Anyabwile. I'm a marriage and family therapist. And in today's video, I'm gonna be doing another analysis of a couple in film. I'm gonna be doing an analysis of the couple in Love Jones. If you're curious about what I have to say about this couple, stay tuned. What's on your mind? First thing, of course, I wanna shout out my subscriber who requested Love Jones. I hadn't seen the movie. Why? And so when I saw that request, I was like, hmm, let me check this movie out. And I was like, ooh, there's a lot of opportunity for good discussion about things not to do in a relationship. And so thank you so much for that request. In this video, I'm going to do both an analysis of the film and share some tips. Even if you haven't seen this film, you might find some of the things they're doing familiar. <laughs> and I have some advice on how to navigate those things and prevent their relationship from being your reality. First of all, I do wanna say there will be spoilers, okay? This movie is from the 90s, but if you were like me and you haven't seen it before, I encourage you to check it out on Netflix and that way you can get caught up to what I'm talking about. The beginning of the movie, I feel, is just like your average romance story. Boy meets girl, they have a connection, they end up seeing one another. I feel like the best opportunities for analysis really come like 45 minutes into the movie. So I'm gonna start there. The first moment where we start seeing some conflict that's worth analyzing is when Nina gets a visit from her ex-fiance. And when he comes, at first she's very cold towards him. She's upset with him. I'm thinking he cheated or something like that. I think they mentioned that in the beginning. But for some reason, she decides that she's gonna go to New York and stay with him for a while. So her friend encourages her to tell the guy she's seeing at the time, Darius, that she is going to New York and to basically test him, see how he responds. If he tells her, hey, don't go, I don't want you to leave, then she knows he really cares about her. If he tries to play it cool, then you know she can just go and, and make a decision at that point. That's the first problem. We don't want to test our partners, right? It's much better to go ahead and let them know the validation, confirmation, affirmations that you're needing from them. See if they can provide it to you when you're honest and transparent about needing those things. Because what happens here is he does play it cool. And so she goes to New York. But really, it does bother him and it bothers her that he didn't make a fuss about her going. What I would encourage you all to do in a situation like that, if you feel the need to test the waters, just have a conversation with the person. Say to them, you know, I actually had an ex who came and saw me and they invited me to go back to New York with them. Um, I really wasn't considering it because of what we've got going on, which I felt like she started to do. Darius, the only reason I'm telling you this is because I really care about you and I'm not trying to play you. And then you say, now I'll be honest, the way that you respond to this will kind of let me know what you're thinking about our relationship. You know, is this something you're cool with me going to New York to see an ex or is this something that I should be factoring in as I make that decision? And then when he played it cool. So you're not mad. Hell no, I'm not mad. I mean, it's cool. We just friends, right? Which he shouldn't have done. We'll get to him. <laughs> when he played it cool, she could have taken that opportunity to say, now I'll be honest, the fact that you don't seem to care bothers me. And I want to know why for me, it seemed like I should be factoring in this relationship. And for you, you're making it seem like it, it's not as important as it seems to me. These kind of conversations will prevent us from being in that everlasting situationship where you have no idea what the expectations are for the person that you're with. Are you exclusively dating? Do you have loyalty or commitment that you owe this person or that you should be giving this person? When we don't allow ourselves to have fully honest, authentic conversations with our partner, we really elongate the process of not defining whatever the heck this is. 
Now, when we talk about Darius, for me, when it comes to him, it goes beyond the communication or authenticity issue that we're seeing with Nina because there were some opportunities. I thought she did a pretty good job making it clear what her feelings were, that she was considering him. There is still some opportunity for improvement. We all have opportunity for improvement with communication, right? But when it came to him, we had more than a communication issue presenting itself. We saw several defense mechanisms arising and I have an entire video all about defense mechanisms and how they can ruin your relationships. If you're curious about that video, I'll put it here in the cards and I'll try to remember to put it in the description box. You guys know how I can be about that, but remind me if I don't remember to do it. And so what we see happening with him is really denial. That is a defense mechanism we see from him a lot. Even in that scene where he's talking to his friend Vaughn, first he says, she's the one, which seemed like a very truthful moment. But then he reneges on that. He started laughing and saying, you know, I got you, I'm joking. And realistically, when he turns and walks away from his friend, we see in reality, that is the truth, right? He really feels like he messes it up and he brings that up again later on when they break up for the second or third time he brings that up again to another friend that he feels like he blew it with her. And so to me, that was an opportunity for him to have a real conversation, not just with his friend, but with himself that could have possibly led to a real conversation with her. But instead of being honest with himself, denial is really when we are lying to ourselves, right? He can't even accept the truth on his own. So how can he ever expect to share the truth with another person? So I definitely saw a lot of denial there, possibly repression, repressing his feelings for her. And those things where he made it so that it was so difficult for him to be truthful that the relationship just dissipated. And so with him, I definitely see that it goes beyond communication. Darius shows some defense mechanisms at play as well. And really an overall immaturity. You know, he's just not open to being reflective on how things are making him feel or how he's impacting her. And so I think that with Darius, it really to me seems like less of an issue with communication and more of an opportunity for self growth. He's like the kind of person that I would recommend, okay, you need to get individual therapy before you all would start couples counseling because there is a reason why it is so difficult for him to open up and admit that a person is important to him, particularly someone that he's in love with or interested in pursuing romantically. So that's one of those things where there are some triggers that cause him to back away from that type of openness and honesty. And he really should evaluate those things before he would be in a relationship or even pursue couples counseling. So basically we see Darius trying to address his fear of disappointment and rejection by her by using those defense mechanisms to convince himself that she's not important and that he can be with anyone he wants. That's what happens when we see him even hooking up with a random girl later on, someone that he said means nothing. But why was he involved with her? Because he needed a distraction to convince himself that Nina was just another woman in his life. Now, I definitely need to talk about Nina dating his close friend after she saw him with that other random girl. That to me was her trying to hurt him because he had hurt her. She didn't want to just tell him, hey, I saw you walking with another girl that really hurt my feelings. Again, please tell me from your perspective what's happening in our relationship because I am hung up on you or I am invested in you and this relationship and seeing you with that other girl hurt me. Instead of doing that, she started dating his friend. And granted, I wouldn't say this guy was his best friend. They seem to have a very problematic relationship, but you could have dated plenty of other guys. You decided to date one of his close friends. Now, I'm not one of those people that will say, you know, under no circumstances should you date a friend or family member or whatever. I know that life is more complicated than that and you can't just make a black and white line, but I do think things like this a lot of times show when people are purposefully trying to hurt someone because they feel that that person has hurt them. You know, she even goes to the party with 
the friend and you know the friend actually challenges her i can't remember his name he actually challenges her and says okay you didn't think that there was a tiny chance that darius was going to be there right like she tried to convince herself that she didn't think that the, he was going to be there when in reality of course there was a part of you knowing their friends that thought that her ex might be at this party. And so again, I feel that desire to get even is a very immature approach to addressing conflict, tension, hurts, fears in a relationship. So absolutely, I do think that she was wrong for doing that, especially because I don't think she was even that interested in that guy, right? It'd be different if like they had this connection and you know, she kept ignoring it and this was her opportunity to pursue it. No, you know, there are plenty other guys she could have seen, but she ended up dating one of his friends. And I think that if this is not your soulmate, if you don't think this guy is your soulmate, like I personally just feel like that's a foul, like that's wrong. I wanna address, people might say, well, why does it matter if it's her friend? If he didn't wanna be with her, he's dating someone else, what's the big deal? Well, the problem is that she still is interested in being with him, right? They clearly have a connection that definitely surpassed the one she had with his friend. So let's say that they were to get back together, which of course eventually they did. Now this is a person that you're probably going to see or you've ruined a relationship or you participated, contributed to ruining a relationship between your partner and their friend. Either way it goes, right? If she's with the friend or if she's with him, now their relationship, Darius and that other guy, it's forever changed. So that's why I think you have to be extremely careful before you make those kind of decisions because it's super hard to rebuild the trust after a situation like that. And you are affecting more than just your relationship with those two people. That's my view on it. Now, is the friend wrong? Absolutely. He's wrong, but this video is not about him, right? This is about Nina and Darius. If you needed more proof that Darius is self-sabotaging in this relationship. When he was talking to that friend after they started dating, they were challenging Darius on not having long-term relationships, right? Which is a characteristic of a person who is afraid of getting hurt. There are a lot of times not gonna wanna stay in a relationship too long because the better it's going, the worse it will feel if it ends and the expectation is that it will, right? If you have had that experience. And the friends were challenging him on that, including the guy who was now dating Nina. And he told that guy, well, your relationships aren't very long either, but the difference is I quit and you get fired. The difference is, I usually quit my job. You, you usually wind up fired. Now, does that make it better? What he essentially was saying was that I make the choice to leave the relationship and the women make the choice to leave you. And so that lets you know right there that in Darius's mind, it is better to be the lever than get left. But in either situation, you're no longer with the person that you potentially wanted to be with. So who cares how the situation ended? You quit, you get fired, it doesn't matter, right? At a job it matters because if you get fired, you can get unemployment. In a relationship, what difference does it make? If you want to be with that person, then whoever ended the relationship is inconsequential because the end result is the same. You're alone and not with that person anymore. So if you find yourself thinking that way, you want to leave the person before they can abandon you, then that lets you know that you have a trigger for abandonment and rejection that might be getting in the way of you building a healthy and authentic relationship that's built on trust. And trust goes beyond just trusting the person's not cheating on you. I hear trust only in that context, but also trusting that this person would not intentionally hurt you having the benefit of the doubt and believing that they would not purposefully abandon you or reject you, knowing that that is something that could hurt you. That is trust too. And really that's the area of trust that I see that is the most difficult to navigate and manage because we think of trust in such a singular way when there are really so many other avenues where trust needs to be built and sometimes restored. Okay, so all in all, I found their relationship to be exhausting. That roller coaster up and down, up and down, I see it every day in my work where you have a couple who's just not fully committed to being honest with themselves first, 
one another next and then with their social support so that they can get the support they need to maintain this relationship and make it work. I found it exhausting. Now, would I describe it as toxic? I wouldn't describe this relationship as toxic. Now, I'm curious about your opinions because some of you may find it toxic, okay? There was some gaslighting happening in the relationship on Darius's end, I would say. I think her dating his friend was just very foul. But the reason I don't say that it's toxic is because in a toxic relationship, from my perspective, you end up questioning yourself. The person is questioning you and demeaning you in a way where you start losing sight of your values, your morals, the things that are priorities for you. You start questioning everything about yourself. That's what I view as a toxic relationship. I think this one was just really characterized by immaturity and that there is opportunity for them to grow and build. But let me tell you this, this is the most ultimate spoiler, okay? Because in the end, she ends up moving to New York and they decide, you know, we're gonna make this work. If you have a relationship that's already struggled with stability and consistency, Consistency when you guys were in the same city, how in the world could a long-term situation positively work? And so we've got to be realistic with ourselves. You know, if you've got a relationship that's already on the rocks, you don't want to add more things that could create tension and frustration. So my prognosis for that relationship, you know, if there was to be like a Love Jones part two, my guess is that they definitely would not be together. I don't expect these two to be mature enough and to communicate well enough to maintain a long distance relationship. So that would be my expectation for the relationship. I'm curious for those of you who have watched this movie or even if you just heard my little synopsis below, what are your thoughts? Do you think this is a toxic relationship? Do you think that it could work? Have you ever been in a relationship like this? Let's get a conversation going below. I ask that you like it, comment, subscribe to my channel and share it with anyone that you think might find it useful. Do you have any like Love Jones diehard fans that you know that are your friends that you can share this with? I really appreciate you watching this video all the way until the end and I really appreciate my subscribers who have been waiting for more videos. I'm trying to find the balance of creating content that I'm really excited about because I know that shines through when I enjoy what I'm talking about and balancing it with your requests because you guys give me so many good requests and I get overwhelmed and I'm thinking like what can I do that will be fun but also something that you're wanting to see so always always let me know your requests. The best way for me to see it is if you comment on a video or if you comment on like a poll or community post that's the best way for me to see it um, and I just appreciate all the requests that you've already sent in and I am getting to them you guys if you've requested something and I haven't gotten to it don't hesitate to let me know that you want that again okay so thank you so much for watching and I appreciate you guys always participating in my community bye